Hello and welcome to another Win Daily Show. My name is Michael Raziel. I got my man Ghost with me and we are looking at the NBA slate for Friday. FanDuel and DraftKings both only are giving us a five-game slate today. So it is what it is, but we're going to rock with it. Ghost, are you excited, man? Absolutely. I can't wait. Another day of, uh, of all-day basketball and we got some baseball on top too. So it's a great day. Baseball, basketball, hockey, everything all day, man. I hope everybody's paying attention now that it looks like the world might be working from home for, for a while. Let's take advantage of this all day stuff, man, because I know a lot of people that around three o'clock, you could just pop yourself in front of your TV and, you know, maybe turn the sound down on those conference calls. What's wrong with that? Right. I mean, come on. It works. It works for me. I hope it works for you, too, man. And I hope it works for everyone else out there paying attention to us. And we are ready to make some money. We had a really nice call the other night. We had Kelly O going off. How did that Brandon Clark thing work out? I think that worked out pretty well, right? Uh, yeah, he hit value. He didn't. Uh, he didn't put up the the seven or eight times his uh, his price that everyone was expecting. He struggled on the glass a little bit, but uh, yeah, no, he uh, he did his thing, and the other two core plays uh, did the thing as well. Donovan yeah. Mitchell and uh, I forget who the third one was. Oh, Joel Embiid, of course, yeah. with the uh, dropping a sixty piece. They're uh, one of the highest scores on the slate. So just another amazing. good day. Just pay attention to us, people. Pay attention to Ghost. He really knows what he's doing. I'm just here for moral support at this point. But uh, we have another slate ahead of us. As I said, it is a five-game slate. We do have a couple lines out currently. So we are going with everything but the Utah-San Antonio game. That, unfortunately, is not on DraftKings or FanDuel. I'm sure you can find a showdown slate for that, and I'm sure it will be a blast. But the main slates on both sites, we're going to be looking at FanDuel today. The first game we have is Oklahoma City-Memphis. Looks like Oklahoma City is favored by three, and the over-under in that game is 225, right around 225. I'm seeing 224 and a half, 224, so not too, bra not too bad. Still waiting on everything for the Sacramento and Brooklyn game. Uh, as we saw, the Brooklyn Nets sat out a couple people, and then they got reprimanded because too many people were resting on an eight-game schedule. So I think it was like $150,000, something like that. I believe so, yeah. yeah dude. Uh... That's what you get, man. The NBA tells you not to rest people. You go ahead and rest three people. You look kind of silly. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna find you for a couple bucks. So I thought that was pretty funny. So no line there. Orlando Philly. We're still there's no line there either. We're assuming it has something to do with Ben Simmons injury. If they're recalculating what they're doing, that game's on at six thirty five. Washington New Orleans again. No line, which is a little confusing. Uh, both teams played. We should be good. But no matter what, I, I have to assume that will be the highest over under on the slate. So I'm sure. Ghost has a lot to talk about there. And then the nightcap. We have the Toronto, Toronto, sorry, everybody, Toronto Raptors and the Boston Celtics 220 over under. Looks like the Raptors are favored by three. And yes, I'm sorry, Ghost, you're, you're a Canadian. I was told very specifically is not Toronto. It's Toronto. Is that correct? That's correct. And there's actually uh, there's actually a reference in one of my favorite movies called Argo. Um, they uh, were where they're pretending to be Canadians, of course. And uh they're going and, and Ben Affleck asks one of the characters where he's from and he says Toronto and he goes, no, Toronto or else uh, they know you. They know you're not Canadian if you say Toronto. So there we go. Yeah. So maybe maybe if I stop screwing up, I could be Canadian <laughs> one of these days. You guys are pretty nice anyway. So let us rock and roll into this slate. Um, let us see. Let us see. Here we go. I'll zoom in a little bit here so we can actually see some stuff. And yes, as I said, we have a nice five game slate ahead of us. We're really going to be having some fun with that Washington-New Orleans game, but let's just go piece by piece and just look at it. So starting at 4 o'clock here on the East Coast, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Memphis Grizzlies. This is a fun game. Oklahoma City's been crushing it recently. Grizzlies haven't looked that great, but John Moran is definitely doing his thing. So looking at this game, looking at these prices, Ghost, where are you looking for a couple players, uh, especially on this top this top half of the uh, of the slate? I mean, specifically at the point guard position, I think uh, De'Aaron Fox, which we're going to talk about in that next game, of course, is is going to draw most of the ownership between that top tier of uh, of himself, CP3, and John Morant, of course. And we mentioned Chris Paul on last show with the whole uh, banana boat crew narrative going up against LeBron and the Lakers. And I mean, Chris Paul did his thing out there, man. He actually dropped uh, over 20 points and uh, he's not scoring as much uh, in the later stages uh, of his career, like, like we had mentioned last time. So uh, in a spot like this, 7,800 is a pretty penny to pay over on FanDuel. Uh, you're going to need him to drop uh, 30 actual points in there, uh, combined with a couple of rebounds. And of course, uh, 
he's uh, he's one of the leading uh, point guards in terms of assists. So there, there's no worry there. But um, my worry for him would be getting to his ceiling at that price. I'm I'm most likely gonna save that play uh, specifically for tournament entries. If you're uh, if you're multi entering, uh, I'd, I'd, I definitely don't mind some Chris Paul going up against John Morant. He's someone that's turnover prone and and plays at an extremely fast pace. So uh, look for Chris Paul to pick up a couple steals and uh, and probably keep doing his thing out there. But uh, my primary target in in a game like this would be SGA. Um, th- this game is most likely going to pay uh, play uh, fairly fast, and he has a good matchup going up against Dylan Brooks. Uh, I, I I really like SGA in this spot. Yeah, I, I do love it. I mean, he's looked so freaking good uh, all season, really. I mean, all all last season, then obviously gets traded. He's looked great all season, but he has looked phenomenal during this restart um he, he has been so much fun to watch any pieces of value that you're looking at in this game specifically uh maybe a little brandon clark again yeah Brad, brandon clark uh still still gets that sp- uh that that spot start of course with uh with jjj out for the rest of the season but his price uh, quickly jumped up uh, by a thousand dollars there we got him at 4900 last slate and he managed to uh to hit value primarily because of that low price i mean if he was sitting at six thousand, I, I would have considered that uh, slightly more disappointing than uh, than than what he put out at five thousand dollars. Of course, given the other pieces uh, of your lineup that you're able to get in by by playing Brandon Clark, but here at six thousand, it's uh, it's most likely going to be a fade spot for me, depending on what ownership looks like uh, leading up to lock. Uh, I, I expect, uh, I, as usual, the power forward position on Fanduel is is somewhat pretty thin. It's it's not like DraftKings where you can slot in. Uh, either small forwards or centers who are dual position eligible. So as of right now, I'm not looking at too much Brandon Clark. Uh, he does have a pretty tough matchup going up against guys like Danilo Gallinari. And of course, uh, Steven Adams is there guarding the paint. So uh, rebounds are going to be hard to come by for Brandon Clark. And at $6,000, I just don't know if uh, if he's going to be able to score enough uh, to, to get us there at the top of the leaderboards in a GPP. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven Adams does have some appeal here. Uh, he hasn't looked all that good, so I I would save that primarily for again these these 150 max tournaments, uh, especially the center position on Fanduel is, is 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 arguably the biggest wild card whenever you're playing over there. So uh, I'm I'm not opposed to having a lot of uh, a lot of Stephen Adams compared to the field, uh, not necessarily a lot. Period, but more so ju- just to get you over the hump in uh, in in terms of what the field has them weighed at in at ownership percentage, but. Uh, n- nothing too too appealing from this game that that really sticks out for me. Guys like Kyle Anderson are going to get it, uh, more minutes, etc. But for me, the primary target here is SGA. I love it. Roll with SGA and and make a bunch of money, people. Let's get it. So let's move on to this Sacramento Brooklyn game. You said most likely going to have uh, Buddy, or I'm sorry, not Buddy Heald. I can't even find him. Where where's our guy, man? Where the heck is he? <laughs> I can't. Oh, I'm too far down the list. There we go. De'Aaron Fox. Thank you. Um, Pretty expensive at eight thousand, but as you said, he's most likely going to receive a lot of the ownership because he's going against, I think, literally nobody. Uh, so tell me, outside of Deer and Fox, which it looks like he's a he's a pretty big lock, or or you tell me, um, who else are you looking at from this game? I mean, again, given this Brooklyn Nets team, uh, who who we we, not, we we phrased it in a nice way last time that uh, that are fielding a team of some lesser known names, if uh, if we could keep it uh, polite again. Uh, we we really need to keep on top of the news in terms of Karis LeVert, Jaron Allen, and, and Joe Harris. Um, like we had mentioned earlier in the show, they did uh, receive a uh, a pretty penny of a fine uh, in terms of labeling guys as rest when uh, when they should have just played it smart and labeled them as injured. But um, I'm I'm gonna wait to see what goes on there. Uh, Jared Allen is still uh, at seven thousand dollars. I I would consider him, especially like what I had said before with the center position on Fanduel. Um, uh, Any time like. I uh, got like Kyrie and KD remain out of course. And he, he's still a guy that, that jumps off the page in terms of level of talent on that team. So he's going to be somebody that I, I might give a look uh, if, of course, if he does play in this game, we're going to need to to wait and see closer to lock. But um, other than that, I, I do like a guy named Bogdan Bogdanovich in this spot. Mm. Um, I was a day early on him. Yep. Uh, I, I, I was overweight on the field and we, we were talking up in discord and, uh, he actually got the spot start and he was getting plenty of minutes and we had mentioned it on the show. And unfortunately he decided to go one for 18 from the field. And I was telling the guys, you know, pro- process is is more important yep. than results. Right. So uh, the, the research was there. The, the volume was there. Anytime you get a guy that takes 18 shots, you, 
you know that he's going to do well sitting at 4,900. And, and I believe he was the exact same price that that's late too. If not, I think he was like at 5,000 or 5,100 in that, in that vicinity. And today he goes and drops a, uh, a 40 piece over mm-hmm. on Fandle and he dropped 35 actual points and the guy just came out red hot out of the gates. And I, I was kind of scratching my head saying, where was this uh, when I was all over you and the field wasn't, but uh, that that's NBA DFS for you, man. So. Uh, needless to say, Bogdan Bogdanovich is a guy that he 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 proved it in uh, in that last game. He he when he gets hot from deep, uh, he's a guy that's a very streaky shooter, and uh, I'll, I'll most likely uh, go back to the well there at the shooting guard position. I love it, and you are one hundred percent correct in sports betting, in NBA, in all DFS. It's about the process. You're never going to get it right a hundred times because if you did, it'd be too easy. But it's understanding, you, as you said, you did the research, you got, you, you did everything you were supposed to do. It's the worst game of chess because you could do everything right and still not come out on top. So let's hop over to this Orlando Philly game. Uh, obviously, Joel Embiid right there up at the top, one of your stars of the night. Uh, ben Simmons is going to be out, and I think it's hysterical that he's always point point guard eligible here uh it just makes me laugh every time but how do you feel about this game now knowing ben simmons will not be able to play he's not shooting up he's already ruled out does that bump joel and beat up even more in your mind yeah for sure i mean his uh his usage rate is gonna go through the roof in a in a game like this and without ben simmons on the court he definitely sees uh the most usage on the offensive end and at the same time he's gonna have the chance to to pile up some defensive stats trying to guard uh Nikola Vucevic, of course, right? So um, Joel Embiid's going to be a two-way threat in this game and sitting right under 10K, he's a, he's a guy that's not overly priced. I mean, uh, it, it's not like playing uh, paying 11000 or 11500 like what we have sometimes with with guys like Giannis and, and Luka Doncic and James Harden, etc. So uh, sitting right under 10000 is 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 actually a good value for a star. Uh, of the nature of uh, of a player like Joel Embiid, and especially in a spot like this, exactly like what you said, uh, Ben Simmons out with that kneecap injury. Of course, he he should get all the looks that he can. And we had actually mentioned it last show when when I had said that the, the Sixers look awful when they when they try and run their offense through Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris and Shake Milton and experimenting with going uh, r- running a couple of rotations, going small and sitting Embiid out and putting Horford at the five and whatnot. I mean. It, that that was just a disaster. If I could uh, if I could wrap that up quickly, because uh, it, it it brings back some uh, some bad uh, highlights uh, from the Sixers there. So now now they're pretty much forced to run their offense through Joel Embiid, and he's a guy that that should be in a smash spot. I mean, earlier this season, going up against uh, against Vucevic, he dropped uh, 24, 11, and two, and uh, he he did have two blocks as well. So um, that won't, while while that won't necessarily be uh, the 70, 80 point game that you would like out of a star. Whenever you're paying $10,000 for a guy, you pretty much want that five times, six times. And you're lucky if you get seven times, it's more in these value plays that you're trying to reach for eight, nine, 10 times their salary. So Joel Embiid is definitely the premier target in this game. Um, or if, over from Orlando, uh, Aaron Gordon is already listed as doubtful to play. Um, so I'm curious to see who gets the start for him. I mean, uh, almost everybody on that team would get a bump uh, considering both him and Jonathan Isaac are now mm-hmm. out. But there's plenty of minutes to have on the wing. And uh, a guy like James Ennis, who uh, I've, I've, I've been telling the team, don't be wary of that that higher ownership that, uh, that he was trying towards in the past couple of slates. And he hasn't been doing um, all that much in the sense that he's been hitting his five times uh, his value mm-hmm. uh, consistently, but he hasn't been uh, eclipsing his ceiling. But in a game like this where Orlando is left with virtually nobody on the wing, uh, James Ennis should see even more minutes than he was in the past couple of games. I mean, he saw 28, 27, and 21 minutes respectively, but look for him to creep into the 30s in this one and uh, and maybe present some value if he could get the best of Tobias Harris. Yeah, and if he's hitting that you know, value already in those 28, 23, 21 minutes, as you stated, I think I got the the order wrong or the number wrong. But I mean, if, if his minutes are going to creep up a little bit more and he's still going to, you know, that value is already there, confident that he has some uh, opportunity to to really smash that and potentially, as you said, get one of those six, seven, eight times. This is always what we're looking for. So here's the fun one. So as I said before, we do not have a line yet for this Washington Wizards, New Orleans Pelicans game, but if I was to venture a guess, we're well over 230, probably talking 235. 
Um, the NBA uh, line line makers got a little um, got a little ahead of themselves. I think that Houston Portland game from a couple days ago was at like 240 whatever and ended up um, only hitting like 220. I think so. They they might they might bring that back down a little bit, but this I think will be by far the fastest pace. This will be by far the quickest. This will be by far the most point total game, which is going to be a lot of fun. So, and the prices here aren't really crazy. I mean, top, top guy at 7,700 and drew holidays, really not too bad. Um, so how are you looking at this game again, assuming at least I am that Zion's going to be on some sort of minutes limit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this game by far has the most appeal. I mean, uh, I, I, I mentioned it in, uh, in my latest article, which you can find over at wind daily sports, of course, that uh, teams are kind of getting into the groove and ramping up the intensity leading up to playoffs here. I mean, there's not all that many games that are left and they're kind of finding uh, finding a groove into their defensive scheme and whatnot. But these are two teams that don't find themselves in that scenario simply because they don't really know what defense is. I mean, uh, it seems like Alvin Gentry just pretty much wants to uh, run and gun and just <laughs> let, let, let's if, if the other team puts up 140, let's just make sure we put up 141 kind of mm -hmm. attitude and that does not win you basketball games, but it's absolutely amazing for us in NBA DFS, of course. So um, I'm, I'm looking to have at least uh, three to four pieces from this game for sure. Um, again, everything's going to come down to Zion and, and his possible minutes limit. Um, we're we're going to keep a look at that closer to lock. But I, I would expect if I could venture, I guess, this early on in the day that uh, exactly like what you said, he'll, he'll probably be on some sort of limit uh, simply because I don't really think it's more of uh, being cautious with him in terms of a, an injury perspective. I simply think he's out of game shape. Mm -hmm. um, he's a guy that looks uh, he he looks slightly uh, slightly overweight out there on the court, and he hasn't been moving as fluidly as he has throughout the season. So, uh, I'm, if, if that's the case again, I'm I'm going to be all over guys like Lonzo Ball, Brian Ingram, and Drew Holiday, and uh, over on the Washington side, it's pretty hard to deny what Thomas Bryant has been doing for him. I mean. Uh, the entire industry seems to be waiting for him to get less minutes. And even when he does in his last two games, uh, he hasn't been hitting that 34, 35, 36 uh, minute mark like what he had when in his first two games in the bowl. But in 28 minutes and 30 minutes, he put up 43.7 and 50.5 Fandle points. So um, Derek Favors uh, it, it is a very capable defender in this league, but he's no uh, he's no Rudy Gobert or Joel Embiid, of course. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, look for Thomas Bryant to try and uh, keep doing what he's doing over there. And uh, of course, you have uh, one of my favorite plays that I mentioned last show is Smith. Um, he's a guy that, uh, that that should consistently hit value. Uh, like, like we had said, his price is it it, it just never moves. Mm -hmm. So it's it's between five fifty one, fifty two, and fifty three hundred every single slate. Uh, sometimes you get a one hundred to two hundred dollar discount going down to forty eight or forty nine, but. Um, his price virtually never moves and he's a guy that consistently hits value. So if you're looking for a point guard, uh, where you're taking some shots on a guy like, like Chris Paul, and you're, you're a little worried and whatnot, you, you want that safety net to, to at least cash and not necessarily go for that takedown or, or you're playing like, uh, some cash games and whatnot. Uh, Ish Smith is going to be one of the targets here. Um, Troy Brown is a little bit expensive. He's been drawing heavy ownership the past couple slates and, uh, sitting at nearly six thousand dollars he's a little expensive for my liking so i'll probably end up sticking to ish smith and uh thomas bryant from washington and uh from new orleans it's going to be drew holiday brian ingram and lonzo ball uh barring i see that zion is a full go and we get confirmation mm -hmm. that he's going to play 34 35 minutes something like that then obviously i'll shift to zion sitting at under seven thousand. that would be a steal mm -hmm. in that case but right now it's going to be drew lonzo and brian ingram yeah, I find it hard to believe he's going from whatever it was, you know, 15 minutes to 17, 18 minutes to 22 minutes to, you know, 36. I just find that way too hard to believe. Um, I still think there's going to be some in, uh, innings. There's going to be some minutes limit in some capacity. But again, this game's going to be fun. Thank God they put it at eight o'clock. Everybody's going to be able to watch it. We're all going to have a lot of fun. And hey, man, hopefully they make us a couple bucks. So uh, last game here, your Toronto Raptors versus these boston celtics uh should be probably the best game i guess on the slate right i would say uh, that to me i think it would be outside of that washington new orleans which i think is just as you said 141 to 140 i think this will be the best basketball game on the slate but in terms of dfs in terms of making us some money ghost um actually wait let me just double check we have boss toronto minus three over under of 220 ish 
You can get it as low as 218 if you're really looking for that over. But uh, talk to us a little bit in terms of the DFS side of this game. Uh, again, like like when uh, in, in Toronto's last game versus Orlando, uh, ho- hopefully you tuned into the show because that, that game drew some some surprisingly uh, heavy ownership and we, we had recommended a fade there. And uh, I pointed out that Toronto games are, are typically slower paced. I mean, again, whenever they're playing a team like Washington or New Orleans, they have no problem running up and down the court with guys like Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam and, and OG on the wing. Uh, you're not going to see Marcus Gasol and and Serge Ibaka running a, a 4-3, 40-yard dash up and down the court there. But uh, mainly those three guys uh, like to get up and down and get some buckets in transition. But this is going to be a, a very playoff-type atmosphere. And I agree with you in the sense that it'll be it'll be the best basketball game on the slate in terms of uh, a, a competitive perspective and and more so from a fan perspective than, than a DFS side. Um, everyone's pretty much priced down in this game too. So... I do get the intrigue. It's not like you have Siakam or Tatum uh, at that 8,500 price tag mm-hmm. that they're typically associated with. Uh, Kyle Lowry sees a $700 discount from his last sleep. Um, but pri- my, my primary target here again is uh, is going to be Fred Van Bleep. Um, I spoke about it uh, on numerous occasions where every time this guy takes the court, it's uh, he, he seems to be the heart and soul of the team along with Kyle Lowry, of course. But um, he's a guy that's extremely competitive and uh, when his shot is knocking down, uh, he he's a great asset to have in our NBA DFS lineups. Uh, he's a guard that could rebound. Uh, he he could dish the rock too and and pick up a couple steals along the way versus uh, guys like Jalen Brown and Gordon Hayward, depending on who he switches on. Um, so Fred Van Vliet at 7,200 is a pretty attractive piece. Um, one thing I do want to point out here is to have uh, short-term memory in NBA DFS because uh, in, in my particular situation, we were... Uh, the team was in uh, in in contention for some massive takedowns, and of course, guys like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and Gordon Hayward virtually didn't see the uh, the court in the fourth. So that was kind of tough. But uh, if, if you were in that spot too, uh, don't let that get to you. Uh, if, if if your gut is telling you to uh, to go with some Celtics, go for it. But um, over from uh, a purely analytical side, uh, look for this game to be slightly slower paced and and more competitive. It's it's going to be a physical game and. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a very playoff type atmosphere in the sense that I don't really see uh, the, both teams running up the score in this one. Uh, Fred Van Vliet would be a guy that I would target. And if you're targeting a Celtic, my, my primary one would be Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. I love it. And, you know, I'm, I'll be honest with you. We're, we're not quite finished yet. We still have to get to your three stars of the night, Ghost. But how sweet would a Clippers Raptors finals be that will show everybody that will show the world. Was it Kawhi or was it all of these other dudes? Um, so that's kind of, that, that's what I'm hoping for. I do want LeBron to win one, but the Lakers have looked absolutely terrible so far outside of that first game. They've kind of just looked like trash. So we'll see what happens there, but give me a Clippers Raptors final and give me a game seven from there. All bets are off. Well, we'll, we'll still be betting on it. Don't worry. But, um, you know, all bets are off in terms of who I want to win. I just want somebody to end it on a buzzer beater. That's all I'm hoping for. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that goes. I hope everyone was paying attention, taking some notes. Make sure to check out the podcast. This will be coming out on. Make sure to check out windailysports.com. Of course, Ghost has all his articles up there as well as the rest of the incredible team we have. They're all incredible, wonderful people that have been making a lot of money in NBA DFS for a very long time. So, Ghost, let's just talk about it. The last piece. Who are your three stars of the night? Uh, The first one's going to be De'Aaron Fox. Um, So he's a guy that, uh, that is volatile in the sense that sometimes he doesn't get full minutes or Sometimes he just goes out there and he's running up and down and he's not really doing much and uh, and and it could be frustrating. But in a spot like this, uh, it, it, it's the definition of a smash spot. Coming off back to back games where he saw thirty eight and thirty seven minutes, um, he's a guy that's that that looks absolutely dialed in right now. And with Brooklyn uh, essentially fielding a G League team, I'm going to be all over here in Fox at the point guard position. Uh, Love it over on Fanduel tomorrow. Um, my second one, uh, even though he does have a tough matchup against Vooch, I'm going to go back to the well with Joel Embiid. Um, he's a guy that uh, that is the the creator of trust the process, and mm-hmm. you know what? Uh, it, it's always process over results for me. He did not let us down last time, dropping a sixty piece, and I know that uh, over on this slate, um, he will do not necessarily exactly the same i'm hoping for more but uh, i definitely wouldn't be uh, frustrated if he drops another 60 for us 
Give and me, then gotta our got to give me a little value, man. We went with the top two guys. Of course. Yeah, we got to find uh, <laughs> we got to find, find that value Kelly, for everybody. We got to find that Kelly Olynyk play that we got yep. at uh, at six percent over on uh, on Fanduel, right? So they actually broke the slate. So um, we're gonna take a, a a little minute here to to scroll and we're gonna see what's going on uh, over at this five thousand dollar range. You have uh, surprisingly a lot of big names. Uh, Kemba Walker is not going to be somebody that I'm looking at all that much simply because of his minutes restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, Shake Milton should get the start again uh, because Simmons is out. Are we just rolling with Ish Smith? Are we going to do that? I'm not going to go with Ish Smith. All right. I'm going to go with that. We, we talk about Ish Smith a lot. I, I, I feel like people uh, people feel like I, I play him every sleep, which I virtually do. But well. uh, I'm... I'm not gonna go with uh, with Ish Smith. I'm gonna go with um, one of Terrence Ross or James Ennis are gonna be the uh, Orlando Magic player that you want in a game like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Terrence Ross is a streaky shooter, um, but uh, for the value piece right now, uh, I, I, I at the time I, I feel a lot more confident going with James Ennis at 3,800. So uh, my my third play right now is going to be James Ennis. And then uh, look for updates, of course, in our uh, in our Win Daily Discord chat for uh, for another Kelly O six percent ownership uh, play to to take down some tournaments. There we go. We got a little De'Aaron Fox. We got a little Joel Embiid, and of course, the third name that always comes to mind there is going to be <laughs> James Ennis. But Ghostman, I appreciate you. Yes, listen to him. Make sure to hop over to WinDailySports.com if you use the backslash Learn Daily or use that as a promo code. You get three days all access to the site completely for free which includes our expert chat where you can ask ghost about all your lineups we have a sports betting tab where we're making people a lot of money and we have everything else mlb nhl if you guys are interested in that too which is a lot of fun we have all these articles all these projections we're bringing out new things that are added to the site almost on a daily basis it seems like at this point and it's my job to make sure people hear about it so here it is people here are all the stuff that we got going on so ghost man where can everyone find you on the internet at DFS underscore ghost uh, over on Twitter. And of course, like we mentioned in the Wind Daily Discord chat, um, I'm virtually there all day long. So uh, make sure to come in. Day long. And it's cool. You can tell his boss because uh, he's a good friend of ours too. So no worries Absolutely. there. You can find me at Michael Raziel one Please make sure to follow us on Wind Daily, at Wind Daily Sports. And as I said, winddailysports.com backslash learn daily. Free three days, all access to the site. You get everything. We'll make sure we make you money. I promise you that. So thank you all very much. And we hope you make it a very, very profitable evening.